Hi, my name is Sarah Paulson, and I'm an artist and animator in St. Louis, Missouri. My trajectory is something like individual, community, to happen. I was trained as a painter and started out by painting portraits. First, I painted my friends. They sat for me as we listened to music and they told me their story. Next, I wanted to talk more broadly about community. What brings us together and keeps us apart? I represented these ideas in group portraits, which led me to storytelling. Be open to change. Then I wanted to have events and experiences where people were working together in community. I have always had a passion for social justice issues and exploring community-based work. This interest has taken the form in community murals, job training programs, community art projects, and animations. I don't want to leave them alone. It's not because they don't know how to take care of themselves. It's not because they are not resourceful, but because, because the world closes in on me. I make animated stories and documentaries, often based on interviews, where I try to get a sense of people. On a good day, it's in 75 degrees, and no wind. It's like sticking your head, sticking your head out the car window and sort of floating in the air. You know, and if you get 15, 20 women all going down the highway together, it's a pretty amazing sight. In this vein, I also create animated educational pieces, like the invention of whiteness. I enjoy telling a story over time and the playful way I can expand my sense of materials within the animation. I founded the People's Joy Parade with my friend and collaborator, Lindsay Scott. I love parades because they are a physical manifestation of community. People come together to perform in costumes. They can take on different roles. Costuming lets us become something else, who we hope to be, what we are afraid of, our shadow. They encourage play and being in character. I first realized the importance of parades while I was traveling in Peru. Despite being a stranger, I, for a brief moment, became a part of a community ritual through a parade. When I came back to St. Louis, I worked with my community to make that happen on Cherokee Street as part of the Cinco de Mayo celebration. As this project grew, the workshops and educational components became more important to me in terms of building community over time in anticipation of the parade. My projects are informed by working on site and by making sound, image, and video recordings. Whether a walk or a trip, there is a way that the environment is imprinting on me. It's a mindfulness practice in presence and observation. When I'm making paintings or drawings, I'm pulling things from my lived experience. I am inspired by my daily walks. I love to go to thrift stores and find things. The things I find are the gems that spark an idea I'm trying to represent. When I get stuck, you can find me at the thrift store looking for source material or out at the park on a walk. Social justice is a running thread in my artwork. I have had paintings become protest banners. I have held art shows and film screenings that ended in free form or facilitated conversations about community healing. The things I have made have become great teachers for me. And in as much as I believe that art can change the world, I also think it can bring joy, pleasure, beauty, and laughter. And I try to utilize these strategies as part of social change.
Patty died, that there would be more truths that would come out of I just don't want Connie to be forgotten. I'm seeking my own liberation through my art. As a white woman, I am not free unless other people around me are free. Whether learning about how I became white, unpacking my ancestry, examining white privilege, considering what it means to be a citizen and have documentation, or comparing the economic level I grew up with versus the one I occupy now, I note how these observations are tied into the joint liberation of myself and others. As I transform, I hope to impart what I learn with others so that I too can find community and catharsis in this process. I'm tied to story, and I like to recognize what stories I have access to. My story intertwines with that of the community, region, and world. I am drawn to share what has happened to me because it has imprinted on how I perceive the world. Currently, I am an artist in residence at the Kranzberg Art Center, and I am using this time and space to plan, lay out, and organize a book of illustrations I made about motherhood, feminism, healing, and mindfulness. It was difficult to have a young son during the pandemic, and some of this work I'm making is based on the lessons as a parent. Things like slowness, presence, facing myself and my own shadow, and all the while I'm trying to break the generational trauma and patterns that I carry. I'm seeking a freedom inspired by this role as mother. I'm after my own consciousness awakening, as long and slow as it takes, and I can't help but feel it is tied into other people. I don't think it's about me going somewhere else. I think it's found in my role as mother, teacher, partner, and friend. And this is what I hope to convey in this book. <laughs>